I use your phone, there's a body out there on the beach. Pretty cut up around the mouth. He was in a fight, all right. Did that kill him, or was he drowned? I'll tell you after the autopsy. Okay, boys, take him away. Hold it. I had to pry the door open. He's up there all the time asleep, dead to the world. Are you William Holleran? Yes. What is all this? Know him? Barney. Like to tell us what happened? Why, I don't know. Last time I saw him, he was staggering toward the road to catch a ride back to town. This last night? Yes. Where did you get that shiner? That was Barney. I threw a party last night, and Barney, like always, got too drunk. Wasn't in any shape to drive. When he got belligerent about it, I took his car keys away from him and threw them in the ocean. He started swinging at me. There wasn't anything I could do but knock him down. Go on. Well, he got to his feet, called me a couple of names, and said he'd hitch a ride. I tried to talk him into going into the house, but he wouldn't listen. So he headed for the road, and I went back in and went to bed. You did some drinking yourself last night, didn't you? Yes, some. Maybe enough so you don't remember what really happened. Meaning what? Part of your story, Chicks. You had a fight, all right. But we heard a different ending. I don't like disturbing you, but... Anne, what's this all about? What a terrible thing to happen, Bill. We'd like to see the boy again, Mrs. Gordon. He's very tired. This has been awful for him. It will take just a minute. We have to do this. Hello, Mr. Holland. Hello, David. Is this the man you saw in the fight last night? Yes, sir. Look, I told you I had a fight last night. What's the idea of questioning the boy? Tell us what else you saw, David. Come on, son. After Mr. Holler knocked the man down, he dragged him into the ocean. Why, I did not, David. I'm sorry, Mr. Holler, but I was watching out the window. Anne, he must have called you. What did you see? He didn't wake me, Bill. Mother gets upset when I don't sleep. And I didn't think you were going to leave him there in the water. Son, do you realize what you're doing? I wish I hadn't seen it, Mr. Holland. Mr. Adams is waiting for you. You can wait outside, Phillips. John, don't tell me you pulled a last minute miracle. No. But I thought it important enough to ask the district attorney to see Mr. Martin. Steve Martin, Mr. Holleran. Steve Martin? Well, aren't you the fellow I rented the beach house from? That's right. Well, I thought you were in South America. I got back last night. I. Didn't know about all this until a letter from the real estate agency caught up with me. I flew back in the hope that I might be able to help you. I'm afraid you're a little late. Mr. Martin, Holleran only has a few minutes. He's leaving now for the state prison. Mr. Holleran, from everything I've heard, you were convicted entirely on David Gordon's testimony. Was there... Was there anything between you and the boy's mother? What do you mean by anything? Did you see her very much? Well, every day. She was always down on the beach with a kid. You never saw her anywhere else? Well, sometimes if Ann wanted to go to the market, I'd drive her. A couple of times we went to a drive-in movie. The boy was always with you. Well, if you know Ann, you know she never leaves him. Then you never saw her alone? Well... Look, what I'm trying to ask is, did you ever give David any reason to think his mother might be falling in love with you? Oh. I see what you're driving at, Mr. Martin. 
And I wish I could give you the answers to make it fit. But I can't. That's what's so crazy about this whole thing. The kid lied. I still don't know why he lied. Any other questions, Mr. Martin? I'm sorry, Holleran. Thanks anyway, Mr. Martin. Mr. Adams, I'm an engineer, not a lawyer, and I'm not sure what's pertinent to a case and what isn't. But I do know David Gordon. I have good reason to know him. Last June, I was assigned a construction job in Venezuela. I wangled a vacation out of my firm before leaving, decided to spend it at my house at the beach. Hi, Mr. Appleby. Hello, Mr. Martin. Thought I might as well stay and say hello. Glad you did. Looks like you'll be here more than a weekend this time. I sure will. I've got three whole weeks. And boy, can I use them. When's she coming down? Who? The vodka and lamb chop girl. Just wanted to know if the lamb chops go in the deep freezers of the refrigerator. The refrigerator? She's coming down today. What happened to the champagne and strawberries out of season girl? Oh, I told her I was going to Africa and hunt crocodiles. <laughs> I discovered that I was uh, allergic to strawberries. Ah, oh, you sure got the life, Mr. Martin. How come one of these women hasn't trapped you? Nothing to it, Mr. Appleby. The minute they get serious, walk away. And don't look back. It's when you stop and take that one look back that you get caught. Now you tell me. Hi. How about a swim, huh? Come on, I'll race you in. I didn't know. I'm... I'm awfully sorry. David! David, what happened? I'm afraid I frightened him. I, I didn't mean to. I'm Steve Martin. I live right here and... Well, then we aren't your property. That's not what I meant. You're welcome here. We have rented the Jones cabin. David saw this log on your beach. He likes to pretend it's part of an old ship. It isn't easy to get him interested in anything. I... I tried to get him to go swimming with me. It's all right, Mr. Martin. You didn't know. Eat your lunch, dear. He's a little uncomfortable with strangers. Please understand. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. I know this is an imposition. As soon as he eats, we'll leave. No, please don't. I, I want you to come here as often as you like. You're very kind. Thank you, Mr. Martin. He's shy, but he's very grateful, really, he is. We've never heard music out here before. Have we, David? How'd you like a radio out here, David? A portable. I'll get mine for you. I never use it. Please, you mustn't go to any bother. Well, it's no bother. It's just a question of finding it. It was very nice of Mr. Martin. You ran out of groceries already. Oh, hi, Mr. Appleby. No, I needed a radio. I thought you might sell me this portable of yours. Oh, I get it. The vodka and lamb chop girl. Moonlight and music on the beach. Yeah, something like that. Uh, whatever you paid for it, just put it on my account, okay? Mr. Martin, you can go down the road a mile and a half and buy a new one. Oh, I don't, I don't want a new one. I have to have a used one. You need a vacation, all right. Uh, the people renting the Jones cabin, uh, you know anything about them? Well, not much. Uh, the name's Gordon. I delivered a few groceries to them. The boys are crippled. Yes, I know. 
Um, is there a, is there a Mr. Gordon? Well, if there is, I've never seen him. Uh, by the way, I told him you wouldn't mind their using your beach. Uh, hope you know it. I'm glad you did. This is a short wave and everything. The boy's gonna like this. I hope so. Uh, Mr. Martin, better let me check you out on that. Uh, it's a little difficult to operate. Oh, I can figure it out. Thanks. Hi, sweetie. Well, oh, hi, Barb. You're early. Oh, you do say the nicest things. I would have been here even earlier, except that I had an extra fashion show to do this morning that I didn't count on. I managed to talk to the designer out of the bathing suit I modeled, though. Will you see it? Gee, you're quiet. Well, I haven't had much of a chance to be otherwise. What's that for? There's a kid down on the beach. I promised to get a radio for him. Will you go deliver your radio, sweetie? I'll slip into something uncomfortable. I'll get back in a few minutes and we'll uh, go for a swim, okay? Sorry to have taken so long, but I forgot it was in the village being repaired. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? How do we turn it on? Um. This is short wave, too, you know, just about anything you want. Simple once you get the hang of it. With the right atmospheric conditions, you can get Europe or... Um... Well, I'm afraid they didn't fix it right. A beautiful play at oh, second now base. we got Forcing it working. The 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 there we are, the ball game. One run on two change hits that. And two the score I said change it. Four to two. And now we're waiting for Cavalier, the first batter. Steve, darling, where did you hide my beach robe? I can't find it. I haven't seen it. You probably left it in town. Okay, sweetie, I'll just borrow yours. Is that your wife, Mr. Martin? Uh, no, David, she's just a friend. I uh, invited her down for a swim. I, I'd better get back. That radio's pretty heavy. When you go in, just uh, give a call and I'll, I'll help you. Thank you. We don't need your help, Mr. Martin. Well, I hope you enjoy the radio, son. Mr. Martin. Please, don't think that David isn't grateful. He really is. It's just when, when you talk about baseball, it... I know. I seem to have a knack for saying the wrong thing. <laughs> I do, too. I never know how he's going to react to anything. How long has he been like this? Since he was five. There was a car accident. His spine was injured. His father was given the same accident. I'm sorry. Don't you know better than to build a fire this close to your house? I didn't build any fire. He wasn't even here. We were having a weenie roast and a whole gang of clowns came around and turned it into a bonfire. They beat it before you got here. Okay, you better beat it yourself. Go on. Looks like you and your wife inherited some well-done hot dogs. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. For Not at all. I... 
Wish they'd left us some coffee, though. I can give you some. Nobody raised in Vienna is ever without coffee. Hmm? Fine. I'll just tell David everything is all right. Tomorrow night, it's my turn to play host. There's a new place about 15 minutes from here. Great food, I'm told. How about it? I never leave, David. Well, we can go early and take him with us. Kids like restaurants. Not David. I've tried. People look at him, and their pity upsets him. It took me all year to get him down here. He doesn't want to be where children are running and playing. I had to promise to stay with him all the time. Isn't that a little rough on you? It isn't bad. I do a lot of knitting. You must, uh, you must like it. I work for a shop in Beverly Hills. They charge ridiculous prices, but that makes it good for me. They are really very nice. They pick up what I have finished and bring down the new orders, so I never have to leave here. I have a housekeeper up in town. She's raised four kids of her own. She might be good with David. I've tried that long ago. I took a position as a buyer and found a wonderful woman for David. Kind, patient. But eventually she wore down. When I was away, he wouldn't eat. So finally, out of kindness and desperation, she tried to force the spoon between his teeth and he wouldn't let her. Suddenly she broke and began to slap him. When I came in, she was kneeling beside his bed, crying and praying for forgiveness. He didn't do anything or say anything, just sat there staring. He was much younger then. I'm sure Mrs. Johnson would not... You are very nice and very kind, Mr. Martin, but really, David and I have learned to manage. It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Let's take advantage of it. There's not a kid alive that doesn't like a picnic. I'll have everything in the car and be here early in the morning. I don't know. I don't know whether David would like that or not. Would you like it? Yes, very much. Good. It's a date. David will like it, too. Oh, uh, 9 o'clock all right? Six of us chipped in and bought a racing sloop. They're not sloops. They're snowbirds and skippered by boys my age. <laughs> David considers himself quite an authority on boats. Then why don't we drive to the yacht club and watch them come in? All right. There'll be a lot of people. I have an idea. I have some binoculars in the car. We'll find a good high spot, have lunch, and you can watch the race. Now let's see what it's done for his appetite. Mr. Appleby's a genius. He's thought of everything. <laughs> Even mustard. <laughs> Where's the bottle opener? Oh, I'm sure I saw it somewhere. Don't tell me you forgot to put in the bottle opener. Well, I... 
have a lipstick on your collar. Leave it as a memento. You might have trouble explaining. To whom? <laughs> That's good enough. At least it doesn't look like lip snow. No, it just looks like I had my throat cut. <laughs> David! David, are you all right, darling? I'm tired. Oh, lunch is ready. After you've eaten, you'll feel better. I'm not hungry, Mother. My back aches. All right, we go. I'm sorry. Be a minute returning this. Anything you need? I could do my shopping as long as we are here. Will you be all right, darling? Want some candy? No. No, thank you. No, thank you. He sees so few people, he forgets his manners. I should punish him when he's like that. But how? And they do some pretty miraculous things nowadays with spinal injuries. My best friend is an army surgeon at the Veterans Hospital. He works David was treated by one of the biggest specialists in the country, Dr. Robert Morby. He did all he could. Well, but every day they're discovering something new. There might be a chance... Please try. When Dr. Morby died, I let another doctor talk me into an operation. David was hospitalized for months, always in pain, screaming for me to get him out of there. And it was all for nothing. I wish you'd let Harvey Thornwald see him. He's had enough pain. He's afraid of doctors, and he's had reason to be since he was five. Yes, but Harvey Mr. said... Mr. Gordon! The boy! Put it on. I always put the brake on. Sure you do. He's okay. Just scared. We'll drive him home. What happened, Mr. Martin? You tell me. Poor little fellow. everything. I guess I was hungry. Can we play chess? I haven't done any work today yet. Just one game. All right, I'll be right back. I wanted to make sure David's all right. He wasn't hurt, thank God. And... Believe me, I put that brake on. I know I did. Then it must have slipped loose. It didn't slip. I've been at the garage for the last hour. The mechanic said it couldn't have slipped. Someone released it. Mr. Martin. By somebody, you mean me? Did you, David? That's perfectly ridiculous, and you know it. How could he possibly? There's nothing wrong with his arms. Look, Davy, if you didn't mean to do it, if you were just playing with the brake, say so and... Leave him alone. Never mind, my dear. You rest now. We'll play later. And you can't leave a thing like this up in the air. It's too important. I asked you to leave him alone. 
Leave me alone. Want tea or coffee? No, thanks. I still have one. You go ahead. Go ahead what? Mix yourself a drink. Flying sausages landed on the terrace. Three little green men got out. I'd ask them in, but I'm afraid they'd freeze to death in here. Sorry, Barb. My mind keeps going back to that kid. If you want to think about legs, why don't you think about mine? Or have you forgotten? You know what I like about you? The fact that I change my own tires. Or is it just that I don't show my claws like most women do? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to start now. Try to be brave, dear. I'm leaving. Barbara. I've got an early call in the morning. Besides, next time you call, be sure it's me you want to see. You better freeze the lamb chops, too. Look, honey, I know I've been lousy company. Think nothing of it. Still having a party this weekend? Maybe. I'll give you a call. Sure. You know what? I'll probably come. Won't you have one, Charlie? I defrosted these with my own little lily white hands. That's what I like about you, Barbara. Talents unlimited. What's keeping this doctor you promised me? I wish I knew. Oh, a pretty little nurse, probably. If not, why not? I'm why not. What do you say when you meet a doctor socially? Oh, I just say, ah, he'll take it from there. <laughs> How about it, honey? Want to see if the grunion are running? Why, you must be Charlie Barnum. How'd you know? My roommate gave me the word. Oh, hello, Barbara. We thought maybe you'd lost your way. Somebody was inconsiderate enough to slip a disc at the last minute. Didn't even take time to get out of armor. Could you use a martini? Several. Okay, okay. How's the surplus crop? Oh, you've spoken for. Huh? Beverly? This is Dr. Thornwall. If you play your cards right, he might get your vitamins half price. <laughs> How are you, Beverly? Fine. But give me a few minutes and I might develop something. <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be a good one, dear. That's your quarter for tonight, Steve's orders. Well, what's with him? Oh, I don't know. You're the doctor. You diagnose him. Steve, you've been talking to me for an hour about that Gordon boy. I can't tell anything without examining him. Well, we have learned some things since Malby died, but nothing that guarantees miracles. Maybe nothing can be done. Maybe not for his legs, but certainly something could be done for what goes on in his mind. Sometimes that's harder than legs. And with his mother not wanting any help, it doesn't make it any easier. He's got her so tied down she has no life of her own. You're in this pretty deep, aren't you? I've spent days telling myself to stay out. But I can't. At least it's easy to diagnose you. First time for you, isn't it? What are you talking about? Well, if you insist, I can examine your hormones under a microscope. But it isn't necessary. Finally stopped and looked back. Transfusion, anyone? No, thanks, Barbara. Oh, uh, by the way, Angel Head, we're out of ice cubes. Shall I call the store? Yeah. Oh, no, wait a minute. I know where I can borrow some. Keep everybody happy. I won't be long. You 
You know what's happening to him? Doing anything about it? Not much I can do. He's just a little too old to burp. Yes? I ran out of ice. Come in. Looks like I came to the right place. I only have three trays. It'll help. And Dr. Thornwald is over at my place. I wish you'd let me bring him over. To upset David again? He's just getting over what you said to him about the accident. He was ill all the next day. I'm sorry. If there's any way, I'd like to square myself. He asked me to return your radio. I meant to bring it over. Why didn't you? As long as you are here, you can take it. I'll get it. Here's a bowl for your eyes. It's your move, Mother. I'll be right back. Mistake with that? If I do, I just unravel. And I'm in love with you. Tell me how to unravel that. I disturbed you. I can't think of a nicer way of being disturbed. I wondered what this room would be like. Tried to imagine it, but all wrong, of course. You mean no etchings? <laughs> I thought an engineer's home would be all angles. Geometric and very uncomfortable. I wish you'd seen it when it didn't have a hangover. <laughs> Is David... David is all right. Steve. I came to tell you I'm glad you kissed me last night. It makes no sense how much it meant for me. But it was like a long forgotten door opening. I don't know if I'm making a fool of myself. You're the first man I've said more than a few words to in so long. I don't know whether it's you or just the loneliness. Last night, this house was full of people. But I was lonely, Anne. Don't let me think of it. Don't let me. remember me? Vaguely. I've made some coffee and toast. It's all ready. <laughs> it's 
seems so natural to be here like this with you pouring your coffee. And remembering I take no cream and only half a lump of sugar. What are you thinking? Hmm? Of shoes and ships. And sealing wax and cabbages and Steve Martin. Very much Steve Martin. And trying not to think that in a few weeks he's going away. He's not. Where we're working in Venezuela is a hundred miles from the city. There's no place for you and David. Besides, it's company policy to send only bachelors. And that was by way of being a proposal. You think I could do that to you? It's impossible, Steve. I love you, Anne. And David's part of you. Together we can help him. Teach him to make a life for himself. I won't take that answer, Anne. There is no other. Don't you think I've tried? I... At the start, I'd pray. I'd look at David writhing, trying to sleep, and I'd pray. He didn't get any better, so I stopped. But together we can make it work, Anne. If only you love me enough to try. Perhaps I don't. Don't listen to me. Don't pay any attention to what I'm saying. I'm lying when I say I don't love you. I do, darling. I do. I do. There's a boy on the beach. He's hurt. You know who he belongs to? Look at his mouth. I saw his crutches slip in the sand. When I got to him, I realized he was sick. He wouldn't let me touch him. It's all right, darling. I'm here. I'll carry him. No! What kind of a mother is she, leaving a boy like that alone? To go. I'm going to stay with him until he quiets down. I have to talk to you. Not now. Yes, now. I'll wait. I've given him a sedative for his sleep. Look at this. He didn't like your being with me, so he ate soap to fake being sick. I know. I've known it all along. You know and you stand for it? He's fighting the only way he knows how to hold me. What other weapon does he have? What choice do I have? There is a choice, Anne. Marry you. No, think of the next 10 years, the next 20. I could never let him live alone without anyone. I have to take the place of the wife, the children, the friends he'll never have. I haven't got much to offer you, Steve. Only my love whenever I can for as long as you want it. You're not cut out for that. Don't try it. That's all I have to give you, Steve. And there's nothing in it for either of us. He's beaten us, Anne. He's probably in there enjoying it. Steve! You're right. 
There's no use my going in there. I'd only regret the things I'd say. He's ten years old and a cripple. There's no way I can fight him. The next day, I put the beach house up for rent, took off for Venezuela. I came back because I felt if I'd been here to go on the stand, the verdict might have been different. You agree? I doubt if anything could have shaken that jury's sympathy for the boy. But they didn't know that his mind is crippled, too. Mr. Martin, your emotions are involved. No jury on earth could be made to believe that that boy is vicious enough to lie a man into prison. I believe it. And if I'm right, the verdict you won is not only destroying Holleran, but the boy and his mother, too. Beyond any help. Whoever has made a voyage up the Hudson must remember the Catskill Mountains. They are a dismembered branch of the great Appalachian family and are seen away to the west of the river, swelling up to a noble height and lowering it over the surrounding country. Every change of season, every I change of in. weather... But we just came out, darling. I it's... want to go back to the cabin. He saw you. He's waiting for me to take him back in. Then nothing's changed? He's been through so much since you've been away. Yes, I heard. He liked Bill Holleran. The trial has been a terrible experience for him. What about you? Oh, at first I wanted to get as far away as I could, and then I realized I couldn't leave. You might come back and I wouldn't be here. <laughs> I never let myself think that maybe you'd rather I weren't here. I missed you. Oh. I can't tell you how much I... I started 50 letters to you, but... Each time you remember David, hmm? I have a present for him in the car, a boat. Shall I get it? Not now. Let me talk to him first. Well, will you send up flares, or shall I watch the window <laughs> shade for a signal? No, come over tonight after he's had his dinner. Okay. You can tell him I've got the present, but don't tell him what it is. I want to surprise him. Hello, Mr. Martin. It's a boat, isn't it? You told him. No, honestly, I didn't. <laughs> I guess from the shape. I had to find just the right one for a special reason. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a racing sloop. That's a special part of it. It's like the real one that Mr. Appleby's son owns. I've rented it for a couple of weeks. How'd you like to go sailing, David? Steve, you must be joking. How big is she? 26 feet. A real beauty. She's too much for one man, but if you were at the tiller, I can handle the sails. Couldn't possibly do that. We can if he wants to. Can't you, David? Mr. Martin? Why'd you want to take me sailing? If I'm going to marry your mother, we've got to be friends. Steve. Martin, I'd like to go sailing tomorrow. I'll be here to pick you up at eight. I'll be ready. Thanks for the boat. I wish you hadn't mentioned marriage in front of him. It upset him. 
He didn't seem upset to me. You don't know him very well. That's why I want to take him sailing, Anne. Just the two of us, so I can get to know him. He didn't want you to come here. He said he wouldn't speak to you. I've never been so angry with him. Then you walk in and he changes completely. Well, isn't that what you wanted? Yes, but... Well, Steve, you mustn't take him sailing. It's too dangerous for him. Please trust me, Anne. I promise you we'll stay close in. It's time he learned to do things for himself. Stirring the boat is something he can do with his hands. I promised him I'd be here by 8 o'clock, but um, if you want to fix breakfast for me, why? <laughs> Make it 7.30. I'll have the coffee on. Oh, there's someone now, if you'd like. I'd like. <laughs> Maybe I should ride to the boat landing with you. I could wait in the car till you come back. Oh, if the wind's good, we might stay out all day. Spoil the fun if we were worrying about you waiting. All set, Skipper? You can watch us from the beach, Mother. I'd rather you wouldn't overdo it the first day. Davy's the Skipper. When he gives us the word, we'll turn back, okay? <laughs> Glad I caught you. The yellowtail are running. You might want to lay to and fish a while. Mr. Appleby, you're a gentleman and a scholar. So the sharks don't spoil the fishing. Good. Dump it in the back there, huh? too far. Here. There we go. I'll make a sailor out of you yet. Let's turn around and head for home, Skipper. Do we have to? You know what your mother said about overdoing it the first day. Okay. Soon. That depends on you. I think she's afraid you don't want her to get married. She didn't ask me. She didn't say anything about it. Suppose she did ask you. What then? Mr. Martin, the jib's fouled. You didn't answer my question, David. That jib, Mr. Martin. You better take it up. David. A shark. It's a gasoline can. You want to take a shot at it? I'll load up for you.
natural, Ann. He'll be handling the sales next. You were supposed to have waited at home, Mother. I heard shots. They sounded like they came from the boat. David spotted a gasoline can. Sank it, too, with the third shot. We're going out again tomorrow. Steve's gonna buy me a denim outfit like his. Says if I'm to be a sailor, I gotta look like one. The reef knot. And this one is called the slippery hitch. You use it for belaying the jib sheet. So. Let me try it. Okay. You've had a pretty full day, David. You should be getting to bed. I'm not tired. Go on, David. We're going out again early in the morning, so you better hit the sack. Okay. You carry me. All right. There we go. I'll help you undress. I can undress myself. You know you always get tangled up. I can up and undress I... myself. I always wake up early. I'll have those nuts down pat before you get here in the morning. I bet you will, Skipper. Good night. Steve? Yes, David? Today's the best time I ever had. It's just the beginning. If Mother doesn't spoil it. Night, Steve. Good night, Davy. Couldn't drive you away by being mean, so now he's going to be nice. Don't you see what he's doing to me? He's punishing me. Let him hear me. He listens when it suits him, so let him hear this. I've had all I can take of his cruelty, his selfishness, all his vile little tricks to get his own way. They're not going to work anymore. No matter what I have and, to do, they're not and going And stop to... it. Yesterday, I threatened to slap him if he weren't civil to you. I told him about your present and insisted he at least act grateful. Everything he's done or said since is part of that act. It's all deliberate to get even with me. You didn't see his face when we were sailing today. He was just a kid having fun. He loved every minute of it. And now you think he loves you, that all it takes is a toy boat and a day of sailing. I have given up everything for him, done everything for him, and had to be grateful if he'd give me a civil word or a smile. There were times I wanted to die, but I don't even have that privilege. Who would take care of him? Anne! Anne! Let him stay alone for a while, as I have been alone for five years. As I'll always be, because he wouldn't let anyone come into my life. You won't let anyone come into his life. That's what you really mean, isn't it? You've made the real cripple out of that boy in there. You've let your love for him become so distorted he's smothered in it. You've kept him helpless and dependent upon you. You've put braces on his mind. It's not too late, Anne. You've got to make him realize that whether he ever walks or not, there's a wonderful world for him to become a part of as soon as he lets go of your hand. David is my problem. It's easy for you to... Not only your problem. A man is in prison because David sent him there. Maybe he doesn't belong in prison. Why did you come back? I'm not sure David told the truth, Anne. And I don't think you're sure either. That's ridiculous. Why were you so afraid when you heard those rifle shots this afternoon? I was startled, that's all. No, you were afraid he was using the rifle on me. You're that terrified of what goes on in the mind of your own son. Never to see him again. Get dressed. We are leaving here as soon as we pack. Where are we going? I don't know. We are going to stay at a hotel in town overnight and make up our minds tomorrow. You decided not to marry Mr. Martin? We are not going to see him again, either of us. Just because you had a fight with him, is he mad at me, too? Get dressed. I could hear until you went outside. I didn't know you didn't like me. 
But, David... Steve has the boat for two weeks. Doesn't he want me to go out with him anymore? Is that all that matters to you? I had fun today. More fun than I've ever had. If we go away, maybe I'll never have fun again. Maybe you wouldn't. Pick him up in the morning. How many bells is 10 o'clock? There's a bell for every half hour of a four hour watch, so 10 o'clock would be four bells. We were supposed to have started two bells ago. You sure your friend's coming? Positive. He's taking a week's vacation just so he can spend it with us. Will he want to handle the tiller? <laughs> He wouldn't even know where to find it. All he'll do is sleep on the deck. It's going to be our job to keep him from falling off. <laughs> a landlubber, eh? Well, now, don't tell him that. I've told him that he's a great sailor. Hi. Wait a second. I'll be back. Sorry I'm late. Shall I make up a lie? Or admit that my idea of vacation is to sleep late? Why the uniform? I decided to change the boat. The kids are cinched to recognize the insignia and know you're a doctor. Well, that's a general idea. Better now than to surprise them later. I told you he's scared of doctors. I thought the reason I'm here is to unscare them. Hi, son. David, this is Major Thornwald. Do I call you Major or Doctor? Neither. I'll be out of this uniform in a minute. You can call me Uncle Harvey. Permission to come aboard, sir? Permission granted. Your shoes will scuff the deck. Didn't you bring anything with rubber soles? Aye, aye, sir. So, is this rough out here? It's as smooth as glass, Uncle Harvey. <laughs> Well, uh, you better take a couple of these anyway. Why? So you all get seasick. I got them from the Navy. Latest discovery. Seasickness is practically a thing of the past. <laughs> Maybe he needs a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come back to life as soon as we get in shore. Better take her in, Skipper. Aye, aye, sir. What do you want on your hot dog, Harvey? Mustard or relish? Funny, man. <laughs> How about you, Davy? Hot dog or hamburger? I'm not hungry now. Sure you are. I'll get you one of each. You brought him here deliberately, didn't you? You said yourself all along that everything depends on changing his mental attitude. This is the next step. He's got to learn to look at other kids running and playing. I didn't say to do with a sledgehammer. How's his mother taking all this? She has him ready for me when I pick him up in the morning, meets me at the door when I bring him back. We haven't exchanged two words in a week. He asked me, you're out on a limb and climbing out further and further. Yeah. 
Let him alone. He's a cripple kid. Come on, let's see how far he can pass. your breakfast. He wouldn't mind waiting. Okay. Where's David? He's finishing breakfast. Steve, I'd like to talk to you. I've been hoping you would. What happened to him yesterday? It was hours before he fell asleep. Something was disturbing him. Was it anything about Bill Holloran? We haven't talked about him. But you're going to. When? Why don't you do it and get it over with? I want him to tell me himself. That's what I'm hoping for. He's changing, Anne. Just look at him. He's putting on weight. His spirits are up. And he's beginning to think straight. Can't you see that? I've seen it and I've thanked God for it. Can you imagine what it means to hear him laugh again? Steve, I wanted to get down on my knees to you to admit that everything I've ever done for David was wrong. To tell you how ashamed I am and ask your forgiveness for being jealous. But then I would remember why you were doing it and I'd be left with only the dread of what might happen to David. Sorry to keep you waiting, Steve. That's okay, Skipper. Bye, Mother. Goodbye. I bet Uncle Harvey's new chicken to sail with us today. We're picking him up. I've got a surprise for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth annual regatta for snowbirds, which is sponsored by the Harbor Yacht Club. As you all know, this is our big race of the season and we can look forward to some exciting moments in sailing from our youthful skippers. It's Junior Cup Day, that's my surprise. You've never seen a snowbird race up close, have you? I'll get some chairs and find the best spot to watch. Be right back. All right, boys. As soon as you've docked your boats, come to the This kind of sailing I don't mind. Course charts and racing instructions from the boating committee. Uncle Harvey. Yeah? You must have seen a lot of soldiers come back from the war with hurt spines. That's my special field, Davy. Do you ever fix any of them so they can walk again? Sometimes. We tell them if there's a chance. It's up to them if they're willing to take it. I'd be willing if there was a chance for me. Is there Uncle Harvey? I don't know. We'd have to take x-rays, run tests, talk to other doctors. When can we do it? Davy, even if we decide to try it, it might not work. It means a series of operations. You'd be in the hospital a long time, and there'll be pain, lots of it. I know, I remember. Ladies and gentlemen, the boys are now getting set for the start of the race. Uncle Harvey, I want legs so bad I'll do anything to get them. Can we find out right away, please? At least we can get started. All set. We just made other arrangements. Davy wants some pictures taken. X-rays. You don't mind leaving the races, Steve? No, I don't mind. Do I talk to Mrs. Gordon or do you? I think I'd better. Do 
Do we have to tell her yet? If we wait until we know I can have the operation, she'll have to say yes. The examinations will take at least a couple of days, Davy. I'm good at keeping secrets. And Davy's right. It'd be kinder if we don't talk to her until we know we have something to talk about. I may be kicking professional ethics around, but I'll climb out on the limb with you. x-rays for an hour now. You're one of the best men available in for consultation. This isn't like rebuilding a bridge, you know. Well, Doctor? If you were my son, I'd try it. I'm going to make a list of all the things I want to do. Trouble is, I don't know where to start. What I want to do first. It isn't going to happen overnight, Davy. I don't care if it takes a year. Mom's in town with a lady from the knitting shop. Said she'd be back around four. Can I stay at your house till then? I've got a better idea. We can get some sailing in. That'd be great. Huh? Without me. I haven't recovered from the last time yet. You can take the car on home and pick us up later. We'll phone you when we get back in. I'll be waiting in a nice, comfortable beach chair. On solid ground. That, son, is my idea of dangerous living. <laughs> We've never been out this far. The better sailor you got to be, the farther out you can go. You think I'm getting better? In lots of ways. I'm very proud of you. You're handling yourself like a man. All the doctors said so. Yeah? Yeah. That's why I think I can talk to you like a man. Okay? Sure. The day I came back from South America, I went to see Bill Holleran. He said that you'd made a terrible mistake about what you saw that night. Anybody can make a mistake. And even if it wasn't a mistake, even if you didn't tell the truth, it's not too late to make up for it. I want to go back. Davy, you can't keep running away from things. Why did you wait till now to ask me this? We weren't friends before. Now we are. I don't think you're my friend. I thought you were, but you're not. Davy, a man is in prison because of you. If he doesn't belong there, you're the only one who can help him. I don't want to talk about it. Davy, nobody can live alone in this world. People have got to help each other. Those doctors today and Harvey, they're trying to help you, free you of your braces. Bill Holleran is in worse braces than you. He's in prison. All I'm asking is that you help him. I can't. Could you if you wanted to? If you told what really happened that night, you'd help Bill Holleran, wouldn't you? You can't make me say anything I don't want to. That's right, and I'm not going to try, because you've got to want to tell me. And if I don't, you're not going to let me have the operation, is that it? David, I didn't say that. I hate you. Is that your answer? I said I hate you. All right, take her in.
He's all right, Anne. The doctor said... It's all right, darling. I'm here. He's more frightened than anything else, Mrs. Gordon. The blow on the head is super... I told you you have to come near me. I'm Dr. Thornwall. Oh, yes. Mr. Martin said you'd take over. He's all right. A large bump, a little shock, and quite a bit of hysteria. You stay away from me, too. I don't think you mean that, Davy. Son, on the way over here, I talked to your mother about the operation. All she wants to hear from you is that you understand what you're facing and have the courage for it. Tell her. David, do you want the operation? No, I don't want it. Make them leave me alone, Mother. I have to undo what happened. He wasn't ready to talk about hollering, and I tried to force it. I spoiled everything, drove him right back to where he was. He wants the operation, Ed. He's got to have it. On any terms. What did he tell you? He wants to come in and talk to you about the operation. No, he's still trying to trick me. He won't let me have it unless I... Unless you what, David? Didn't he tell you what happened today? He only told me he was sorry it happened. That's what he wants to tell you. He hopes you forgive him. Then he's not mad at me? He loves you, David. And I can have the operation? Mm -hmm. Mother, Uncle Harvey says I might be able to walk. Yes, you might. And I don't have to tell you what that would mean to me. But when you say your prayers tonight, I hope you'll pray for Bill Holloran. At least you should ask God to forgive you. I keep praying he'll forgive me for not making you tell me what really happened that night, for being afraid to ask you. Leave me alone, Mother. You are alone in this, David. Whatever you do is your own decision. I have made too many for you. The operation can only cure your legs. I'd rather you think straight than walk straight. One small question, David. How do you feel about going straight from here to the children's hospital? Your mother says it's up to you. I want to. Good. Then I'll phone and get things started. Where is Steve? He thinks it will be easier for you if he isn't around. Steve! Yes, David? Aren't you going to take me to the hospital? If you want me to, sure. Good. I'll get dressed. You only have to get undressed when we get there. Why don't we borrow this? Steve. Yes? There's something i got to tell you. 
Sorry about what I did on the boat. That's all right, David. Let's just forget it. Will you carry me out to the car? Of course. Mr. Holland didn't kill that man. I said he did, but he didn't. The man came back by himself later. He was looking for something on the beach. Then he walked into the water. I didn't know he drowned until next morning. I want to tell Mr. Holden I lied. Can you take me to him? I'll have to wait a while, David. You'll have to see some other men first. They'll ask you a lot of questions. It isn't going to be easy for you, David. I think you are up to it. I have to be. Skipper, it's going to be a real pleasure to sail with you again. He's gaining on them. Yes. Oh, he was so close. He almost won. He was in the race. And he didn't come in last. 